So how do we tell whether we have a redox reaction? Well, the key to figuring out whether it's a redox reaction is if the oxidation numbers change. So if those oxidation numbers, if they change, then it's a redox reaction. So let me write in the oxidation numbers for each element here. And we're not going to worry about whether the equations are balanced or even the subscripts here. All we want to do is see whether the oxidation numbers have changed between the products and the reactants. So pause and see if you can figure out which one of these reactions is a redox reaction. In the first reaction, we have Na plus 1, Na plus 1. Sulfur minus 2, sulfur minus 2. Hydrogen stays the same and chlorine, it stays the same. This is not a redox reaction. This is a double displacement, which aren't redox. But down here, carbon goes from a negative 4 to a positive 4. Hydrogen stays the same, but oxygen, because it's O2, a free element, it's 0 here, and in the products we have negative 2 and negative 2. So this is a redox reaction because the oxidation numbers change. Let's try another one. So pause and determine which one of these reactions is a redox reaction. So for the first reaction, lead is plus 2, nitrogen is plus 5, over here it's plus 4. Hmm, that's changing. Oxygen, we have a negative 2. It's negative 2 here, but we have a 0 over here. So this is going to have to be a redox reaction because the oxidation numbers on the nitrogen and this oxygen here, they change. But down here, everything stays the same. If you look at each element, it'll be the same. This is not a redox reaction. So how do you figure out the oxidation numbers in the first place? So we have these general rules here, and they're not difficult. It just takes a while to really learn to be quick about finding oxidation numbers. There's a link at the end of this video with lots of practice and examples for you to learn this. So for right now, let's use these rules to figure out whether a reaction is a redox reaction. So free elements, that's when we have an element all by itself like copper, iron, O2, we saw that before, H2, any of these are considered free elements and they have an oxidation number of zero. So the copper and the iron, they're going to have an oxidation number of zero. So that's pretty easy. When we look at something like iron or copper, these are transition metals, so they can have variable oxidation numbers. So we're going to have to look at what it's bonded to. In this case, we recognize that SO4 right here, this is the sulfate polyatomic ion, one you just need to remember. When we have an ion, all the oxidation numbers, they add up to the charge on the ion. So for the sulfate here, we have an ionic charge of 2 minus, just something you need to remember. So the whole thing. That means the iron has to be plus 2. And you can already see we're changing from a plus 2 to a 0, so we probably have a redox. Let's look at the copper. Again, the whole thing here is a charge of 2 minus, so oxidation numbers add up to that minus 2 there. Copper has to be plus 2. And we can see that we go from a 0 to plus 2. We're oxidized. That means that this reaction is a redox reaction. So the key here, because these oxidation numbers changed, we know it's a redox reaction. So to wrap up, if the oxidation numbers change, it's a redox reaction. And you can use these rules to figure out what those oxidation numbers are in the first place. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.